Welcome to Morning Man with Pastor Steve Myrie. This morning's topic, God's will, not yours. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought you would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. 2 Kings 5, 11 through 12. Sometimes the biggest struggle that the Lord have with us is getting us to do what he wants as opposed to what we desire. We tend to forget sometimes that God is not our co-worker or just a mere friend or some hustler that you can bargain with to get a good deal. But he's a sovereign God that goes by his own will. Therefore, we cannot put God in a box and try to manipulate him, getting him to do what we desire. Many of us are so self-willed. Self-will is defined as pleasing oneself, especially in a position to the wishes and desires of others. Another word for self-will is stubbornness, being self-pleasing, arrogant, overbearing. Proverbs 1 verse 32 reminds us that the waywardness of the simple will kill them. The complacency of fools will destroy them. Being self-will stems from pride. And pride blinds us from our own weaknesses. Pride keeps us from seeking help. Pride causes us to blame others rather than taking blame and responsibility for ourselves. God cannot be seduced by our status in this life. Here's not who you are or what position you might hold. It doesn't play a role in how God treats you. Be it rich or poor, God deals with every man according to his will. Jesus, as he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, Scripture reminds us that as he was going through great depression and his sweat became as drops of blood, at that time the pressure became so overbearing that Jesus uttered the words, If it be possible, let this cup pass. But then the flesh had to accept the will of the Spirit. So Jesus uttered, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Naaman came to Elisha having a preconceived idea of how he would be healed. Please note, he was the one that was in need. But being that he was a man of authority and wealthy and very famous, he thought he could strong arm God into working for him how he desired. Naaman came to Elisha full of pride. But God has a way of humbling us. <laughs> the songwriter says, if I'm too high, Lord, then bring me down. The truth is, Naaman's healing was not in the dirty waters of Jordan. No, no, no. God allowed Naaman to go into Jordan to humble him. If you notice, he became angry and he compared Jordan to other more prestigious rivers. But the only way Naaman would have been healed is if he was willing to surrender his will to what God required. There are those of us who have expectations of God, wanting God to function in a particular way. Naaman said he thought Elijah would have come out and probably say some fancy thing and did some fancy thing for him to be healed. God wanted to humble Naaman so much that Elijah didn't even come out and speak to him himself. Today, somebody needs to surrender their will. You need to stop fighting God. You need to understand that God will never be submitted to you. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. What God has planned for you is the best plan. It might not seem like it at first, but you better be willing to get into the muddy waters of Jordan. And if you dip one time, your miracle might not show. Guess what? Dip again. <laughs> ah, Naaman had to dip and dip and dip. He had to dip seven times before he was made whole. The quote of the day, Naaman's healing was not in the Jordan. It was in his obedience to the will of God. As you go today, go knowing that you're going to surrender your will to the Lord. And remember, God does not need your help. God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated.